Hola, welcome to the Change Within Real Robert Dean's podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the top six things. And these are the top six things that I really needed. And I was looking for them in all the wrong places. So the top six things that you need that we need to really have the type of confidence that we desire. I think we can all say when we've been through emotionally traumatic, abusive, neglectful relationships in the past, our real confidence is shot. Our relationship with confidence is non-existent. We question if it ever did exist because we get into that gaslighter mind, that the archetype of the gaslighter. I talk about that in my program, Transform. We get into that and, and we question, we second guess, we doubt everything. And we feel like what confidence. I I mean, I can fake it. And so maybe I'll do the thing where they say, fake it till you make it. And I'm trying, trying to fake it, but it's like, I, I even feel bad about faking it because I feel like people can know that I'm faking it because it's not real. It's not genuine. It's not authentic. It's not pure because I it's faked. I slap a smile, throw some lipstick on, put some makeup on. And I'm like, how are things? Oh, they're good. You know? Mm, Yeah. No, they're good. Mm Mm-hmm. Thanks for asking. So anyways, <laughs> but we we need things to be confident. And I, for so long, was on a search and on a quest for how to build my confidence. One of the first courses, like first self-help courses I took was around abundance and confidence. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, getting into opening my own business and working the way that I do with people, they said, well, you need, you need to build confidence. Confidence comes through practice. You've just got to practice, right? Practice makes perfect. I'm like, but what if you fuck it up every time? Does that like, how does that make perfect? You get perfect at at fucking it up and, and messing it up. Like you get perfect at, and then every time you do that, doesn't that continue to like chip away at your confidence and deteriorate your confidence? So well, you're telling me like, it's okay, just keep trying, keep going, get out there, keep doing it. And and every time I do, I feel less confident, less assured of myself, less like I know what I'm doing because now I have more experiences of messing it up and not, I'm not going the right way and feeling like a failure and feeling like a fraud and feeling like, oh, I'm supposed to just smile through this and I'm supposed to leave all these troubles at the door. That's just what they say, just leave it at the door. And I, I don't guess how this is supposed to build up your confidence, keep going out there and keep coming back feeling like you've been shot down. I don't get it. Like this stuff just doesn't make sense to me. And there were so many things in my life that just didn't make sense to me, but I was doing them because it's what people said to do. And it was the way they said to do it. And I'm like, okay, eventually something's got to give, it's got to break, it's got to work. But it wasn't, it, it was giving, but it was giving me less and less confidence, less and less faith, less and less trust. It was giving me something I didn't want to be given. And so I was left holding something I never wanted to hold. And I'm like, where can I put this? I don't want this. I don't want this. But I had felt like I had nowhere to put it. And so I felt like it was just with me all the time. Like I was carrying it around, but I didn't want to be carrying it around. I didn't desire that. I desired confidence. That's why I kept going out and doing the things that I was told to do that if I did and when I did and how I did them the way that they told me to do them, it should work and it should build up my confidence. But I felt like it built up a wall. It built up walls around my heart and it built up walls that that kept in anger, resentment, jealousy, all the things that they say you don't want to be. And I'm like, I'm becoming a person I don't want to be. And I don't like this. There's got to be a different way, a better way. There's got to be something. And I always felt like something was missing in my life. And it wasn't until I found Jesus Christ and let him into my life, into my heart, into my soul, into all the areas that I tried to keep hidden from everyone else, including myself, that things truly changed. And so if you're really wanting to build up your confidence, it starts with these six things. Number one is wisdom. I'm like, what's wisdom? I have wisdom. I I totally have wisdom. Like I have morals. I have wisdom, right? Isn't that what morals are? Wait, what is, what is wisdom again? I feel like, do I? I thought I did, but looking back, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm questioning this. Again, gaslighter mind coming in, questioning, doubting, second guessing, not sure. 
asking other people what their thoughts and opinions are. And then that just makes me question myself even further and even more. And I would read things like the fool is self-confident and I would relate it back to the past emotional abusers in my life, the narcissist. I'm like, yeah, that person's clearly a fool. And I would have other people validate that by me with me by saying that like, they'd be a fool to leave you. What were they thinking? I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm pretty great. Like I gave them everything. I don't know. I don't know. And clearly I gave them everything and it wasn't enough. So I must not be enough. And that shot my confidence. Like on my resume of relationships, another failed narcissistic relationship. That's not a confidence builder. <laughs> it was like, that's a confidence shooter. It shoots your confidence down. But then I would read things in the scripture as I got to know Jesus and say, what is this whole thing all about? I mean, I guess I'll give it a shot. Uh, the fool is self-confident. Yeah, you're right. And I would see that the self-arrogance, self-confidence, and I would see that he really, really didn't have confidence because if you do, you don't need to bring others down to build yourself up. And that's all that people like that do is they knock other people down in an effort and energy to have themselves be built up. And I knew enough about narcissistic abuse and emotional trauma to, to know that about people. And so I think I mentioned this in another podcast before. When I first read through the Bible, I come through it in a way to validate myself, my experiences, and what I have been through, really not to get to know Jesus. But I love that he uses all things for his good, and he can use anything, anything at all to get to you to take you so far, farther than you ever dreamed, imagined, or saw yourself going because you can't go there alone. It's with him. And he was like, that's okay. I understand why you're reading the Bible. I understand that you're in, in pain and you're hurt from your past, from past relationships, but I'm going to use that. And so I would read things like, oh, wisdom is the fool that is self-confident. And I'm like, yeah, the narcissist is self-confident. I would say things like that to myself under my breath as I'm reading the Bible. And then it goes on to say, but those who are confident in the Lord are wise. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to be confident in the Lord, but Lord, you got to prove it to me. Why should I be confident in you? Why should I believe in you? Like I'm, my faith was <laughs> so weak in the beginning and that's okay. Mm -hmm. it, it was enough. It was enough at that time. It was enough for him to just have me get curious about this thing called wisdom and confidence and faith. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this stuff is, but I'm willing to see, I'm willing to open myself up to seeing, and that's all he needs is your willingness and your desire, desire to be confident. I'm like, okay, those who are confident in the Lord are wise. Well, I was wise enough to leave an abusive relationship. I was wise enough to know that I didn't want to stick around and have my daughter witness firsthand like two parents being verbally and emotionally abusive to each other. I was wise enough to know that even though it fucking hurt and my ego took a massive blow, that it was a good decision to leave my home and leave all my possessions and leave in debt and move into my childhood bedroom home with my daughter. I was wise enough to know that that was the right decision for me, for us, and ended up being an incredibly wise decision for my entire family because it got my stepdad coming back to faith and back to church. So, okay. All right, God, I'm kind of getting this now. Those who are confident in the Lord are wise. I'm like, I'm kind of confident in you. I've still got some problems and some areas that if you could come into, that'd be great. But he's using all things for his good and he's working in those areas. Um, it says wisdom, good judgment, and discernment come from walking closely with God. There are times in my past, I didn't know that I was walking closely with him, but I look back and I see that even though I wasn't necessarily walking closely with him, he was walking closely with me. He protected me from so many things and he has blessed me in so many ways. And I had wisdom enough and it doesn't matter how much. I think we judge ourselves based on how much wisdom we have or how quote unquote good we are in the eyes of other people. And this says good judgment and discernment come from walking closely with him. And again, it, he's walking closely with us, whether we know it or not. He's there. He's protecting us. He's like, hey, I'm here over here, over here. And it's almost like someone tapping you on the shoulder and then like turning and looking the other way and then laughing. And you're like, what was that? I felt that. What was that? And then you're looking in the wrong direction. And then it's almost like you hear this laughter and you're like, it's not funny <laughs> because you look like a fool. You look stupid. You're like, what? what? Oh, I feel so stupid. I looked over there when you're actually over there. It's like God is tapping on us and we're looking the wrong way. And then we're mad because we feel like we look like a fool. And then <laughs> we're like, stop doing that. He's never going to stop 
walking with us, even if we're mad at him and we want him to, because we're like, you weren't there for me when I needed you. And he's like, that's not true. That is simply not true. That's a lie that you're believing. I've never gone anywhere and I never will. And when you look at the, the places in your life, even in the past, when you thought that he wasn't walking with you or you weren't walking with him and you're, you were lacking confidence, you can see that in those times in your life, you still had good judgment. You still had discernment. That was from him. And a lot of times I think we like to take credit for that ourselves. I know I did anyway. Like, oh, that was me. I made a good decision. He guided me to making a good decision. And now that I have a relationship with him, I know that. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for guiding me to make a good decision. I thought that was my decision. I was going to be the self-confident one, the self-righteous one who was going to take all the credit for all the good things. <laughs> and now I give all that credit where it's due to him. But that is one of the things that you need to have confidence is wisdom. Wisdom with him. The next one is peace. And this was a big one for me because I'd never experienced peace like I have now in, in, in times of doubt, times where I still have questions about how things are going to turn out, where I still am like, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how you're going to make a way, but I trust that you will. And I know that you will. But I experience this, this peace that makes no sense now. And I love this line that says, peace comes from a right relationship with God. There is no pillow as soft as a clear conscience. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Um, it says, whatever happens, you can trust that God is with you and in control. And now that I know that, I have peace. And it's not like the kind of peace where you throw your two fingers up and uh, when you take in a picture and you're like, peace, like bunny ears, not that kind of peace. That's totally not what it is, but that's oftentimes what we chase. It's not the kind of peace that looks like the Mercedes symbol when you're drawing it on a piece of paper, like peace and love. It's not that kind of peace. It's it's a peace that comes from a right relationship with God, talking to him. However you decide to talk to him, that's prayer. And, and, and reading his word, even if it's reading one line a day, one, one thing that you see, one thing that you say to yourself, like, I like this one because I used to try to manifest the life of my dreams, like big worldly earthly desires, like Matthew 21, 22, if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I used to ask for specific things and certain things. And then my prayers changed. I'm like, you know what, God, screw all that. I just please. I, I just want peace. I want peace in this relationship. And what I really meant was wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like elbow God, zap the narcissist with lightning, make him go away, like make all of this chaos and conflict stop. But I got what I prayed for. I received what I asked for because I get that I began asking for peace. And when I experienced that peace from him and through him, that built up my confidence in him. It wasn't a self-confidence kind of thing. It wasn't a self-righteousness. I'm confident. I can strut my stuff. I can stick up my boobs and I can dye my hair blonde and walk down the street with my little hot body and a little tank top on. That's confidence. It's not that. But I used to look at people who did that and think, wow, they're really confident. Look at them. I want some of that confidence, but this is a another level kind of confidence. Like this is unshakable, unquestionable confidence because of who your faith and your trust is in. And my faith and trust used to be in the narcissist and in and, and them doing all the things that they said that they were going to do that they never did because none of that was true. It was just to keep me on the hook so that they can continue to manipulate, use, and abuse me. And, and I know that if you've gone through those types of relationships, you've experienced that too. And you've also experienced your confidence being shot and it, it can be rebuilt. It can be restored, but only if you're putting it in the right hands, in the hands of Jesus. The third one is goodness. I was like, good Lord, can I get some goodness, please? Because I have had so much badness in my life and I felt this. There's a verse that says, never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. I used to think that I had to stay in the narcissistic relationship because they begged me to stay. They begged me to not walk away. But I realized they only were begging that of me because they were begging to have it easy 
to to continue to to be in my life and have let them be in my life so they could continue to get away with everything they were getting away with. Even though I was calling them out on all the things they were doing, they didn't care. And so I used to think this, I need to stay. It's the right thing to do. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. And I'm like, well, he deserves to be loved. He deserves to to have a second chance. He deserves to be loved the way that I want to be loved in the way that I hope I deserve to be loved. And I think that they can give me that that kind of love. But I realize that kind of love can only come from God, our father, that can only come from Jesus, does not and cannot come from another person, obviously, especially an emotionally unavailable and abusive person. And so I, I would read things in the Bible, like take every opportunity to do good if you have the ability to help someone, do not delay. And I'm like, fuck, I got to stay. I got to stay and I got to help this person who's taking advantage of me. That's not what the scripture says. Take every opportunity to do good. And then I realized, you know what? I need to take this opportunity for myself to do good, to do good for myself and to do good for my daughter. And what is doing good for myself and for her is getting away from this abusive relationship, is creating physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, energetic boundaries. And that's taking the opportunity to do good for me because then I'm trusting, I'm putting my faith and hope and trust in God. Cause in that decision, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work out. In fact, I believe it's going to blow up and it's going to get worse than it already is. But that was taking the opportunity to do good for me, which led me into putting my faith in something good, in something great, in him, because I thought this is going to be scary. This is a horrible, bad decision, a very, very bad idea because they're going to blah, 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 X, Y, Z. They're going to blow up. They're going to do this. They're going to come after me. They're going to smear my name, all the things that we know that they do. But that was the opportunity to do good. If you have the ability to help someone, do not delay. And then I began reading that in a new way. If you have the ability to help someone, hello, Sarah, hello, open your damn eyes. Are you not seeing this? You're, you're living blind to seeing this. You have the ability to help yourself and help your daughter and help others get into a better place, a better situation, a better state of mind, a better state of soul. You have the ability to help someone. You've got to help yourself first. And then I realized all the ways that I was helping everyone else except for myself. And I read this in a different way. And then I realized I have the ability to help myself so that I can help someone else, but not people who are going to continue to use and abuse the help. That's not what it's saying. Do not delay. It was like, wake up, girl. Stop. Stop delaying helping yourself and stop delaying letting God help you and work in and through you. And so I began to read this in a different way. And that's number three, experiencing the goodness. And when I began to experience the goodness of God in that way, then I began to get more confident, more confident in my relationship with him and who he is. And that developed this confidence within myself. Number four is love. And I thought, well, I did. I loved them as much as I could. And it wasn't enough. And, you know, I've been in so many failed relationships where I didn't feel loved or I felt like the love was broken. And I realized that this says the Lord takes the upright into his confidence. When the Lord is our confidence, he takes into his us into his confidence. This is a wonderful image of what intimacy with God looks like, his confidential communion and secret counsel. And I started seeking counsel from him instead of from others, especially others who didn't have a relationship with him. Oh, oh my gosh. I just read the intimacy one. That was intimacy. Let's go back to love. Okay, rewind, rewind, rewind. Love says, <laughs> do not contrive or dig up or cultivate evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly and confidently beside you. Trust in God leads to a love for your neighbor. And I realized, I don't, I don't get this. What does that mean? That doesn't make sense. But I realized that I didn't feel loved and I tried to love with all my might. I tried to love with all my heart this person who took advantage of that and who used it and abused it and manipulated it and contorted love into something that was really abuse with a mask on. And I thought, well, that's what love is. Love is these 
this kind of relationship, love or these types of arguments, love is this, love is sacrificing. And so I was doing so much sacrificing. And then when the narcissist would say, but I love you, I'm like, well, they love me. So I guess I, I, I guess this is love. And I realized love is not abuse. Nowhere in the Bible does it say for God so loved the world, he continued abusing the world. Like it, that's not what it says. It says for God to love the world, he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what we have when we let his love for us in. And when we let his love for us in, it builds our confidence. Our confidence grows. We can be confident in the fact that we're going to have eternal life. That even if we get heartbroken in this humanly, worldly, earthly life, it's okay. It's okay. We can always have faith and trust and love with our father in the relationship with him and let him come into our hearts, into the places where we have felt broken and where we felt like our hearts been shattered and smashed and squished because someone else that we loved broke our heart. And he is the one that redeems and restores through his love. And that's the sense, this experience of love that, that really started to make more sense once I got closer with him, which leads to the one that we talked about before, which is intimacy. Intimacy is into me, see. And I realized that the more time I spent with God and the more time I spent reading his word, I began to see into myself the places that were dark, dark shadows in my heart and in my soul, the places I was trying to keep him out of. And I was like, you can come into my life, but only in these areas. It was like, my life was like a house, like the metaphor for a house. You can only come into this room, this room, then this room, but don't go into that room and don't go into the closet and don't go into the attic. Okay. Cause that's where I hide the things that I don't want you to see. And that's intimacy. He shined his light into those areas that I was still living in the dark, that I was still harboring pain and shame and guilt and resentment for things that I had done, for things that I had said, for choices that I had made in the past that I'm like, hey, come in and make all the good things good, make all the shiny things shiny. But I've got areas in my life that I don't want you to see into, but into me see was me having confidence in who he is to let him into those areas of my life and in my heart and in those dark spots in my life and in my soul. And when I let him into those, everything changed. I experienced so much confidence because he was able to show me that he wasn't going to go into those places and hurt me the way that I had been hurt by other people going into those places. Ah, that's what intimacy is. It's having a deep, deep, deep connected relationship. And I used to, I used to tell the narcissist in my past, like, I just, I want to be intimate with you. Like we fuck and we have sex, but like, I don't feel loved. I don't feel connected. I want to feel loved. I want to feel connected. I want to develop and grow and cultivate this intimacy. And of course, you know, in a natural response is I want those things too. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. That's what I want. And I realized I was asking the wrong person for that. Not like I want to go have sex with God, but you know what I mean? Like I wanted intimacy. I wanted a deep, passionate, loving connection, like the kind of bond that can't be broken. And that's what I received when I received intimacy. And when you receive intimacy in relationship with God, your confidence soars. You just, you have a confidence that can't be broken. You can walk down the street in a paper bag and be confident that you are loved, that you are uh, abundant. It's like this light that radiates and shines out from within you. So even though you're not wearing the sexy latest Lululemons, like you can be confident that you look good, <laughs> like that you got it, that you have that it thing, that it factor, because it's him. It is his confidence. It's his intimacy. And this is a wonderful image of what intimacy with God looks like. It's the secret counsel. It's that wisdom. It's that confidence. It's the faith, hope, and trust that you wanted, that you were seeking in the relationship with the narcissist that's just simply unavailable. And it's fully available and completely available in the right relationship, in the relationship with him, with Jesus, with God, in that intimacy, in that powerful bond, that confident, strong bond. Okay, number six is humility. And this, this took... Oh man, I tried to hold on tight. There are doors within me that I tried to bolt shut, that I tried to like solder, you know, like people weld, the welders, that's the word I was thinking of. Like I tried to weld these steel doors shut like a banker's door. Like you've seen movies where they bank, they, they break into like these vaults. I had vaults within my body, within my heart, my soul, my mind that I'm like, God, 
please don't break into those places. Like, please, when I, when I opened up my life to having a relationship with him and, and I felt my confidence increasing and growing and building, I'm like, just, just please stay out of the vaulted places. Okay. Like uh, almost like we're asked to do on our computers. I'm going to update. I'm going to change the password. I'm going to be like, oops, I forgot the password just because I don't want to let you in there. I'm going to change the password. Please don't go in there. And it felt like there were areas and, and things in my life that I'm like, I just vault, vault. Like that's, that's a vault. There's someone who I used to know in my past who actually knew had a really close relationship with the past narcissist. And she said, Sarah, what's going on? You can tell me anything. And she's like, I'm a vault. Things go in, but they don't come out. They're locked away in secrecy forever. And I tried on that same relationship when I began my relationship with Jesus. I'm like, okay, well, I'm a vault. Like, (laughs) just don't go into those places. And building confidence comes with humility. It says, God gives grace to the humble. If your confidence comes from trusting the Lord, you will have no cause for pride. And I realized that the narcissist has every cause for pride because they are the least humble people. They can be seemingly humble, but they're not actually humble. And so God doesn't favor them. He favors the humble. He pours his grace over the humble and If your confidence comes from trusting the Lord, you'll have no cause for pride. You'll have no reason to walk with arrogance, with a chip on your shoulder, to to be mean or think mean thoughts or thought hurtful, harmful thoughts to other people, or have those even come out of your mouth because what's stored up in the abundance of your hearts comes out of your mouth. And so you'll have no cause for pride. God promises to give you grace, blessing, and honor. And that's what humility is. And humility in your relationship with Jesus, it builds your confidence. You can confidently say, I'm not afraid to to show you my weakness. I'm not afraid. And I'm not going to live in hiding from you. I'm going to open up the door of the vaults that I've built inside. And I'm going to let you into those places so that you can renew and you can restore and you can fill those vaults with your love, with your mercy, with your grace, with your forgiveness, with your acceptance of who I am, because I'm willing to open the vaults. And with that, I have full faith and full trust and full confidence that he knows the real me. He knows my sorrows. He knows my struggles. He knows the trials. He knows the tribulations. And I have full confidence that he knows everything about me and everything I'm going through because I've chosen to let him in. I've chosen to say, here's the passcode. Here's the password to the vault. And I've heard that click, 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 opening of the door. And I'm like, Oh shit. Oh shit. What are you going to find in there? And he's like, I already knew what was in here. I just wanted you to have the confidence in me that I wasn't going to punish you for what you've chosen to put in here. The way that someone in your past would have the way that the narcissist used to use things against you. You used to tell them things about you, deep, dark secrets, and they used them against you and they used them to cause pain towards you. And so that left you feeling scared and afraid and probably thinking or believing that God would do the same, but he doesn't. He comes into those places and he restores and he redeems and he heals. And there's some humbleness, some humility when you're like, oh God, what are you going to do when you find that out about me? And when you open up to seeing and to believing and to trusting that he's not going to use it against you the way that others have used it against you, the way that the narcissist used it against you, your confidence, your faith, your trust in yourself and in him is restored and regenerated and renewed. And that's what he's come to do is to make you a new creation and to build your confidence, not just in yourself. It's not a self-confidence, But it ends up being confidence that you feel and you experience within yourself. But it's a confidence in him and who he is and what he stands for and what he's done and what he desires to do in your heart when you have confidence in him. And when you take on these qualities of humility, humility, intimacy, love, goodness, peace, and wisdom. And when you put all of that in the relationship you have with him and you continue to cultivate and every day grow that relationship with him, just like growing and cultivating any important, meaningful relationship, just like you did with the relationship with the narcissist. You talk to them about everything 
you you go to them, you ask them their thoughts and their opinions and and you trust and you believe in everything they say. Like when they say, oh, we're going to, we're going to work all this out. Right. And and the narcissist will use future faking and, and you'll tell them about your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your desires, your wishes, your prayers, and your future and the future that you want with them. And they tell you, oh yes, absolutely. We're going to do all that. It's going to be that way. And you put your faith, hope, and trust in that. The same type of relationship gets to be cultivated, grown, and created with God, but God's not going to let you down because he's not the narcissist. <laughs> God is going to build you up and he's going to actually make that possible in ways that you never saw that it would come true with the narcissist because you're putting your faith in the right person. God doesn't fake a future. He builds it and he grows it. And he wants to do that with you and build your confidence, faith, hope, trust, and belief in him. So I invite you to invite him in right now by saying, Jesus Christ, come into my life. I hear you knocking. The door is open. Come on in and have your confidence grow in him. I love you guys. I'm praying for you and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.